Hi everyone, this is your chess puzzler and a very warm welcome to the channel. One game you can never get tired of is the 64 square board game. Okay, there are a few exceptions, just like with any other game, and particularly if a game is drawn with only a few moves having been played. When you have a decisive game, you just can't argue it is boring. Today I'm going to look at one game that is absolutely smashing. I know you know what game we're looking at because of the thumbnail, so let's kick right with it. We're looking at Singfield Round 7 and the game between Hikaru and Levon, two of the very best of the best, with Anilo hovering around the 2800 mark. Naka White went for probably Levon's very favourite opening, the English, with Knight of 6, Knight C3, e5, knight f3, and knight c6, we have the English four knights variation. With g3 ready to get the bishop on the diagonal, Levon came up with bishop b4, and now when the bishop got in on g2, Levon castled. With castles from white, Levon went for the daring e4, sending the knight to g5. Levon here went for the principal variation and removed the knight and now with the recapture the rook came in on e8 and here Ricaro could have gone for a queen move to c2 to gain the pawn on e4 but he didn't. Instead he went for f3 which gave black the option to either take or not take. Levon pushed the pawn forward and white can easily take this pawn. Hikaru avoided the taking and went for d3 a move that covers nicely the pawn on c4. With d5 opening up the position, the queen came in on a4, pinning the knight momentarily. You can say much, but what you can't argue about is how quickly the game opened up, even though all the pawns are still intact. Levon attacked the knight on g5, and here we saw the first pawns coming off on d5. Once the pawn was recaptured, Hikaru moved his knight to safety, but Aronian opened up his position even further, going right after that knight. This very move forced the knight to yet another square. Having the e pawn in white's territory, nearly with no backing, is not something we see every day, especially at this level of play. Levon did not see anything wrong and pushed his pawn even further in support of his e pawn. The move allowed the knight to return to e4, which protects the c3 pawn, but also the knight on e4 is sitting comfortably. If black wants to harass the knight, he can bring in the bishop on f5, but why should he? Black came up with rook b8, and what this does, it intends to launch the b pawn forwards to open up this file and allow the rook to be lifted. Once the queen returned to a3, we saw rook to e6, and now with c4, it was white's turn to harass the knight on d5. Sending the knight to e7 allowed for this bishop to hit the diagonal, and believe me, this game was about to get into shape. With the knight coming into f5, Hikaru came up with d4, and Levon just thought about it before making his next move. You always wonder when it comes to Hikaru, was it some sort of a tricky move? Something was telling me we were going to find out. Once the pieces on d4 were exchanged, here is where we begin to see the depth of Hikaru's calculations. And if you now look at this pawn on a7, he's wide open for the taking. Hikaru grabbed this pawn and gave Levon a problem to find the solution to. A move like bishop to d7 is going to be catastrophic because it leaves the knight wide open and once the queen takes him, you may want to kiss this game goodbye. In fact, Levon had only a single response and returned the knight to c6, a move that protects the rook and attacks the queen at the same time. Having returned the lady to a3, Levon went for the trade of queens and once Hikaru accepted, after rook d1, g5 and knight c3, the rook retreated to e7. Levon just knew that the knight would come in on d5, going after the pawn on c7, 
and Lemon just took a precaution now that he could. Rook f7 was a very easy move to find. And now with h4, Lemon wanted to get his rook active and finally manages to do this by getting him back to a8. With a4 and now knight a5, Levon was now looking at the pawn on c4, but could he really take him without consequences? We may never find out. When the pawn on f4 went, Hikaru got his king on h2 because of one reason only. He wanted to get the bishop active, and the only way to do this is by slotting the king into this square. And here is where Levon captured the c pawn. If you attack the knight by sticking your d rook in on c1, do you really need to move your knight out or is there a more attractive option? I think there is. Simply get your bishop out to e6 and if you now take the knight, not only you can remove the knight, but now this rook needs to find safety. In either way, white is busted. But if we come back to the game, Hikaru did attack the knight using his a rook, but now Levon used another tactic and got the knight in on d2. There is no way to get this knight away from d2 and he can sit there as long as he pleases. Hikaru went for the hanging pawn on c7 and after having arrested him, in turn, Levon took on a4. And what is the situation right now? It looks to me Hikaru is in trouble. Not only is a pawn down, but just look at the state of his bishop on g2 and just look at the position of Levon's knight on d2. And right now, you just can't say each of these minor pieces are worth three points each. Trying to get the bishop out of the way looked like a logical option, but there was a problem with this idea, and Levon saw it right away. But can you see what is going on in two, one, and pause? The move you're looking for is knight takes f3 check. And you know, once a check kicks in, you need to drop everything and deal with this. Having eliminated the knight from the game, got the rook in with a fresh check, but was this enough to materialize any advantage? Getting the king back to g1 will bring about a fresh check on g7, and now with the king being forced to the very edge of the board, black is free to remove the bishop on h3, but the party for black is not over. Rook g1 will get the bishop in with a check, and this means one thing, King h2 runs into a mate through various ways. And the very first move from many is to remove the pawn with a discovered check. And I'm not going to go through this variation because it's quite easy to work out. On this move, since the king move drops the bishop, Hikaru got his bishop to block the check. And here we saw a number of force moves, namely rook g7 and now rook g1 to cover for the pin. Levon has an extremely powerful move, but could he find it? Levon is a very good tactician and he always delivers. If he slots in the rook on g3, it will be game over. But did he find this move? Yes, he did. Removing the king out of the pin was the least of Hikaru's worries, because after bishop h3, should the bishop take, it will be mating one when the rook recaptures. Hikaru's only response was to get the bishop on f1, and there are a few things Levon can come up with, but can you see any one of these moves? The best option Levon has is to just push the pawn to e2. Bishop takes on h3 just does not work, because when the rook recaptures, the king move to g2 will bring about a queen promotion, and since this comes in with a check, once the king removes the rook on h3, Black can get the queen out of the way, and from here is a matter of principle and technique. And Black should not have any problem winning this game. After e2, Hikaru had to give up his bishop, and the exchange led to one outcome. With the knight trying to get back into the game, Levon knew he was winning and could not be bothered to pay attention to details. Though he saw this move, he just ignored it. The move he ignored was this, bishop g2 check, and once the rook is given up to the e rook, the end for white is very near. 
Levon instead went on to remove the pawn and now with rook g6, he was trying to get back into the game. But Levon did have everything under control. He withdrew his rook to e6 and though an exchange on e6 seems to have been Hikaru's best option, he decided to go for rook g1. Since the exchange on e6 did not go through, Levon simply grabbed the rook and once the rooks came off, after the bishop got in on d7, we saw the king coming out from the corner. With a check on g3, the other rooks came off and it was now a matter of simplification. And what do we have on the board right now? Another knight versus bishop endgame, but there was a huge difference because of the imbalance of the pawns. Of course, we are not looking at three pawns versus one pawn, but two pawns versus one pawn. Because when the king recaptures this pawn on g3, this is what we need to look at. With king to f7, king to f4, and now king to e6, the knight is out of play. And we talked about how much stronger the bishop is on an open board because of his long range ability. The knight can only strike from a very close proximity and all black needs to do is to be careful about not to get forked. With the knight being forced back, the bishop retreated to e8 and now with knight d3 and king to d5, that b pawn was going to home in. Through knight f2, the bishop came in on d7, cutting off the knight's path to g4. King e3 led the king to this square and Levon was in full control of the game. Hikaru knew this, but what could he do? With knight e4, bishop c6 and now knight to g3, the bishop came in on d5 and it was only here when Hikaru got his king on d3 when he knew he stood no chance and did the honourable thing and ended the game. And with this very significant win by Levon, Levon finds himself tying with Maxime and Vichy at first place. Facing a strong Svetler in round 8, I guess the real test will be against Magnus in round 9. Having won the Singfield back in 2015, Levon is going for his second title and right now he's the only player on the field who could achieve this magnificent result. And on this note, many thanks for taking part and many, many, many thanks for watching. I will be back to cover the most important round of them all. This was your chess puzzler. <laughs>